Good morning. We certainly want to uh, thank the NMA and especially Dr. Sullivan and the Wayne Medical Center and the University of Michigan for having us here. We, we like to convene every once in a while because we all like to talk. And so, uh, so we are very pleased to be here. And we're, we're, we're going to get through. I have some slides, but I'm not sure I'm going to show my slides. We can put them up, but I think that I'll just say my five minutes worth and, and be. And Things we all know. We know the population's changing. You know, by 2050, we express, express, expect 50 percent of the nation to be a minority population. So we've got to change what's going on. And just because we have our population has changed, the percent of our population that's represented by people like in this room, healthcare providers, is only 4%. We're all ashamed of that, and we've got to fix it. And we're going to, and that's, that's a part of the health inequities that we deal with. We know that the nature of disease is changing. Our disparities are persistent. They haven't changed. They remain the same. One of the other things we know is we're the richest country in the world. We've got the best doctors, hospitals, nurses, research in the world. But we don't rank number one as the healthiest population. We've got a very expensive sick care system. I think every Surgeon General, we've all been out there working and talking and trying to change it. And we're pleased to have the Affordable Care Act. At least it's a start. As you heard, every principal, well, president has been trying to change and get a health care system for the past 100 years. And you may not like a, the Affordable Care or Obamacare or whatever you want to call it, but let's not throw it out. Let's fix it. And I think that that's the best hope we've got is to try and fix it. So we've got to change our expensive sick care system into a health care system. We all know the factors that are affecting health, and I don't have to go, go through them. We talk about poverty, education. You know, you all know that when I talked about sex all the time, I always said that the best contraceptive in the world was a good education. And so, and if we want to change and reduce poverty, and, and we know the most common cause of poverty is children born to children. So we've got, those are the things that we've got to fix. And we know that we need to make sure that we have access to health care. Dr. Satcher has always talked to us about provider access. You know, we've got to have doctors like yourself, but there are not enough. We're 13% of the population is African Americans, 4% of the doctors. So we've got to have more doctors that look like us. We were talking about poverty. We talk about where poor people are. We know where they are. We know them. We see them. And you, we, don't have, we don't have to tell you about them. We talk about cultural access, transportation access. And we look at the problems related to disparities. We got problems related to the system. Our system has a problem. We've got to fix it. We've got problems related to the providers. Our providers carry the same providers on their backs that our communities provide. They're from, from our communities. We've got problems related to our patients. You know, we, we, have, we, we have, don't educate our patients. They can't do what we tell them because they don't know how. And we're going to have patient-centered healthcare 
We're going to have to make sure that we educate patients so they can help us be good patients. They are going to be the greatest help that we're going to have in the 21st century to make a real difference in health care and what goes on. We know that our health care system is at a crossroads. We're presently spending 17.9%, it's 18%, depending on what day you look, and it's projected to go up to 20% of our budget. And this is something that we've got to deal with. Before Affordable Care, 21.7% had no health insurance. Now it's down to 11%, but that's far too many. Every Every person in this country should have health care as a human right. We know that we've got an aging population. I'm proud about that because I'm a part of it. We're, having, we're living longer. And the fastest growing segment is going to be our over 85 population. We're getting fatter. When I lived out on the farm, I was sleek and thin. <laughs> Dr. Foster was reminding me of that this morning. But you know, now that I sit home and pretend I'm thinking. So, but we've got to I, 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 I commend the Surgeon General for talking about exercise. My husband out swims every single day of the year. And he's nice and sleek, and his wife keeps getting fatter. But, uh, and Dr. Novella calls me every time I'm supposed to wear this uniform about a month in advance and remind me that I've got to put this uniform on. <laughs> so, I, I'm going to heed my Surgeon General's advice and go on a diet. So, Maybe this has been good, but as you can see, we're getting fatter. We're getting more obesity, which is because we're getting fatter, and that's something we've got to do something about. But the, the thing I talked about as Surgeon General the most is because our sexual burden of disease. 18% Eight, of the total, total global budget is spent on sexual health, on, on sexual diseases, 32% of, of the burden of disease is born, of our health care budget is spent on women of reproductive age. And yet, we don't feel we need to talk about it. Medical schools, we had a summit on medical education, sexual health and medical education. And do you know how many hours, the average number of hours that medical schools spend on sexual health education? It's five. We've added one. Five hours, and it co consumes 32% of the budget, and we can't talk about it. We know that we are not a sexually healthy nation. You know, we talk about our values. Look at the problems we're having with child sexual abuse, date rape, intimate partner violence, and I'm very pleased that the Surgeon General is going to address that. College sexual assault, it's on the TV, every day, LGBT, transgender abuse. Then you say, we wonder, well, did this just start happening? No, it didn't just start happening. The news media is doing more to make us recognize it and deal with it. So I think we really, it's a, you know, you are, if we don't ever talk about it, we aren't going to de ever deal with it. And I'm very pleased that, uh, because, you know, I have no regrets as Surgeon General about talking about sexual health and preventing teenage pregnancy. I felt very strongly about that. And I want to thank you for making sure that we have markedly reduced teenage pregnancy. I understand in some of your cities, black teenage pregnancy has been reduced 60%. But, so, uh, and that's because of the hard work that many of you have been doing, and I'm, and I'm very pleased.
If we look at ethnicity, you can see that black teenage pregnancy, the black line is for America, but for all America, teenage pregnancy has reduced, been reduced by more than 47%. So that's saying we are committed to reducing poverty, ignorance, and enslavement. And I want to thank you for doing that. We've done a lot. We've got a lot of challenges ahead. We've come a long way. We've got a long way to go. And so I think we as Surgeon Generals want to do everything we can to help you achieve your goal. And our main focus is going to be on prevention. I think that we've got to prevent these problems and not keep trying to fix them. So, and I want to thank you for all you've done and all you continue to do.